Hello, welcome back. It's a gloomy day here, but I'm attempting to appreciate it because it's probably the last day it's going to be like this until it's above 30 degrees for the next four months. But ignoring that, this is the first time, I think in, what, seven, eight years on YouTube, I'm going to try to make a video that lines up with something in the outside world. That's right, I'm attempting to make a Halloween video for the, <laughs> the first time. But yes, I was inspired by the Discord server who's currently running a competition for um, Halloween type content. That didn't mean, uh, like, um things that shock you like terrible chemistry like bad work practices for example more um you know just sort of spooky stuff and um i was thinking what's what's a spooky reaction i could do because i'm, I'm not gonna like blow up a pumpkin or like i don't know extract calcium from bones actually that's let's let's flag that one remind me of that in um eight months time <laughs> for me i think spooky chemistry content should have three elements really one it should be like toxic so it'll be scary at least on some level two it should be able to do some sort of spooky action at a distance to reveal something or, or, or do some sort of strange magical thing three it should be a nice shade of yellow when i say nice shade i mean it should be a scary shade of yellow all of those things considered and because i've been wanting to do a reaction with this for a little while five grams of ruthenium sponge ruthenium ruthenium who cares semi expensive so getting five grams of it you know isn't really terribly expensive but um you're not going to buy 100 grams of it for example accessible to do small scale chemistry and and completely um a waste to do like large scale chemistry like i tend to do so we're going to attempt to do some small scale chemistry it's not generally my forte so um i'm going to actually get some glassware out not just like a blank table and some powder because um you know it's not the weekend Right, I have here uh, 80 milligrams, 80 to 90 milligrams of uh, ruthenium powder. But I did weigh out 100 milligrams, but um, yes, it obviously spilled. So uh, we've got an 80 to 90 percent yield already, and all I've done is weigh out one reagent. <laughs> we've got some yellow solution here, which is some concentrated bleach. So we're going to be adding a ruthenium sponge to the um, to the bleach here. What we should see is we should see it reacting to form uh, ruthenate. So it should be uh, dissolving into the, into the bleach. We should see some darkening of solution anyway. Ruthenium really doesn't know what it wants to do in solution all of the time. So it's hard to know exactly what its color it's gonna be or what oxidation state, because um, it doesn't really know itself. So it's very slow at doing things. It doesn't really make its mind up a lot of the time. So it is reacting quite fast, especially for ruthenium, which is traditionally a very unreactive metal. All right, I can't tell if this is all dissolved. I think it's still dissolving, but um, I've got a second test tube here. Actually, by the way, these uh, test tubes were donated to me by Mark from Victoria at Christmas last year. Um, and it's taken me this long to get around to using them. Like everything in this video, I am obscenely slow. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this solution into here and then we're gonna dilute it up with some distilled water. I've just got the dilute solution cooling down in an ice bath here. It looks uh, mostly dissolved. There's the odd fleck of ruthenium still left. We're cooling it down here because we're attempting now to oxidize this even further. What we want to oxidize it to is ruthenium tetroxide. And this is a very similar molecule to the, um, the notable bad guy in chemistry, which is osmium tetroxide. Osmium tetroxide is, is well known for its, its intense toxicity. It's um, very volatile and it's, oh, I wouldn't say commonly used, but it's, it's used in a few applications, but, and it's one of the most toxic things that just sort of generally gets used in, in a lab. It's a necessary evil. It's a big evil and a necessary one. Ruthenium tetroxide is a slightly less toxic, um, but it is more of an aggressive oxidizer than, than osmium tetroxide. Ruthenium tetroxide does turn up in um, organic chemistry occasionally. It's used when you want a really, really uh, aggressive oxidizer for certain things. Ruthenium tetroxide is really hard on some groups and, and not on others. So Weirdly, it's very hard on stuff like alkanes and it will oxidize them and, and tend to leave stuff like epoxides unreacted. Actually, that's another uh, typical um, university 
organic chemistry mechanism, the Sharpless oxidation. Uh, you may have uh, had to learn it at some point. I did. We did a lab thing of a Sharpless oxidation. So, so the oxidizer we're first going to use to make ruthenium tetroxide is uh, sodium pyridate. Uh, this is the ortho pyridate. I think generally things call for the meta pyridate. I'm not entirely sure there's a difference. We made this ages ago. We made this from iodide and chlorine. If we just add it in there, it, it might work, but I'm not sure we'd generally be able to see it. And the ruthenium tetroxide tends to react with water, I, I think as well. So we're gonna get one of the solvents that it doesn't react with, which is not a very long list, I gotta say. The very frightening, spooky uh, carbon tet. Just, we're just going to use a tiny smidgen of carbon tet, all right? It's a tiny smidgen. I said at some point that I wasn't going to use it, but just for this reaction, we're just going to use a tiny smidgen of carbon tet. We're going to see if any color goes into the carbon tet layer. We're not expecting any to because the um, ruthenate that's currently in solution is, um, you know, there's all kind of polar complexes and stuff, so it's, it should stay in the water and won't migrate to the carbon tet layer at the bottom. You can see here in the light, there's, there's no yellow in that carbon tet layer. Even with lots of vigorous shaking, there's there's no color. None of the ruthenium complexes have moved to that carbon tet. Now we'll add the pyridate, and if we oxidize some ruthenate to ruthenium tetroxide, it should dissolve in the carbon tet, and we should see that carbon tet take on a yellow coloration. Carbon tet is so dense that the uh, powder sitting on top of the carbon tet. All right, we'll give this a bit of time to react. I might give this some very mild heat. It's very cold at the moment. Even though I just cooled it down, I didn't know how it was going to react. We don't want to uh, boil off any of the ruthenium tetroxide. That would be very bad. Um, just some just some tepid water to see if we can um, speed this reaction along. Oh yeah, once the sunlight hits it, you can see it's pretty yellow in there. It took two hours to react, but um, once it did, it, it got there. We can definitely see that yellow coloration of the of the carbon tet. Carbon tet is very non-polar, so, so it's not going to just pick up colors from anything. It's, it's got to be really something that dissolves in organic solvents. So yeah, that's definitely the ruthenium tetroxide um, coloring in there. And the carbon tet will go straight through my gloves and into my skin, carrying the ruthenium in there, and it'll poison me, and that will be very unpleasant. Probably stain my skin for a very long time with ruthenium oxides and, and, and brown. All right, we're going to attempt to uh, oxidize some more of this solution to ruthenium tetroxide uh, using a different oxidizer. So we've got an old friend out, the ozone generator. All right, let's 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 do this. Let's make some ozone. Oh, I still got it. Yeah. Yeah. Still works. Right, I've dragged my oxygen cylinder. Uh, out here. It's got the flow rate monitor on it. It's uh, hooked up to the ozone generator and what we're trying to do here is see the property of ruthenium tetroxide to develop fingerprints. I'm not sure if it's ever used but it was definitely proposed to be used. I think it was used by some police forces around the world. I think um, Australia, I've read some reports that Australia really strongly consider it because it is very good at developing um, fingerprints. So so if you leave a fingerprint on, on something then that you leave um, your oils and stuff like that from your skin and and the ruthenium tetroxide will react with those oils and form very dark colored ruthenium oxides. So then you can take an image of that of that fingerprint. So I put a big greasy fingerprint on um, the underside of that bit of glass there. You know, you can't see, but we're hoping to develop it here. So what, what we're gonna do, and um, I m must have got this idea from some police document or something somewhere. <laughs> I, I hate to think that I came up with this myself, but the oxygen is going to come through. I can I can turn the oxygen on now because um, I've turned the regulator on and everything. So that goes through bubbling solution. So it goes through our yellow ruthenate solution there. And in a second, we're going to turn on the ozone generator and that ozone is going to react with the ruthenate, ruthenate and then uh, form ruthenium tetroxide in small amounts because it's volatile. It's going to get carried up with that gas there and um, hit the top of our test tube at the top there. That's that's the idea. Hopefully we only need very small amounts of ruthenium tetroxide to um, react with our oils there to be able to develop the fingerprints. I'll set the camera up and then uh, turn the uh, ozone generator on. I'm going to stand far away when this is on. Right after 10 minutes running, we're not seeing any fingerprint development that I can see, but um, the solution has gone a much more yellow color. 
which is what we expect. This is the sort of the more typical ruthenium tetroxide color. I think that's progress with the ozone's doing something. It just needs to um, go for longer. We, we're not producing very much ozone with this. What I might do is I might just add the rest of that ruthenium solution into here and then uh, just keep running this. Oh, 10 minutes later, and I don't believe it, it's actually vaguely starting to work. We haven't developed anything quite on here yet. You can see around the edges of this beaker, like there's a fingerprint there that's been developed. See that? That wasn't there before. All right, I, I still want it to work on this fingerprint that's here somewhere. So I'm gonna run it for a little longer. All right, I've had to cut things short because um, <laughs> I obviously am not standing right here when it's running because, you know, this is a death machine that produces two highly uh, poisonous gases. I could hear it <laughs> and it was making a bit of a weird noise and I come over and this, this bit had fallen off and it was sitting about here and there was just this huge purple arc between the two of them. It was still running. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess that's what you get when you um, put it up to 15,000 volts. Thank you. So, um, ah, no more ozone generator. Oh, I'll find I'll just resolder that. Did we develop fingerprint? Well, I think we started to. Yeah, see that fingerprint there? See how it's been darkened? You couldn't see anything like that before. All the lines and ridges, they are, they're black now. So that tiny amount of oil has reacted with the, the volatile ruthenium tetroxide. So you could photograph that now under a microscope or something. Actually get a, get a reasonable image, because before you couldn't, you couldn't make that out. Better fingerprints around the side have developed further. But uh, yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a great success. I think it's pretty bloody spooky, pretty bloody yellow, pretty bloody toxic. So I think that satisfies my three categories with some cursed content. And throw in the death machine, which is um, a pretty cursed contraption, I'll, I'll be honest. Let me know if you enjoyed this little, little you know, one-off video about, about ruthenium. If you want me to do more, you know, exotic metals. Want to see me die with the death machine. Um, that's what did I call it? Was it the death machine or like the hell, the hell machine, the hell machine? Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot.